No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are always welcome here at Plymouth Church. Good morning. How's everyone doing today? <laughs> it feels a little bit cooler, and I felt a breeze coming through the door, so that seems to be a pretty good change from earlier this week when we had that heat wave. Hope for good things, and that keeps up. <laughs> Before we get to announcements, we invite everyone to grab the red friendship pads and to please sign them and pass them down the aisle so we know who is here and also we can stay in touch with you and get to know you better if you are new. And in keeping with our summer theme of Know Your Neighbor, we want to know how you are doing. And we'd also like to stay connected, so if you see those green slips, we would invite you to fill us out if you have concerns, comments, questions, or prayers. And when you fill us out, you can just put them in the, you can just pass them on to the deacons when we do our offering. And Jared will do a better greeting of our speaker for today. But I'd like to take a brief moment to welcome the Reverend Sarah Trongariot, who will be representing DMARC and be giving a brilliant sermon later. <laughs> and we, we aren't going to announce them all, but this time I'd like to invite you to turn to the current happenings section at the back of your handouts. And I'd like to draw your attention to a few notes real quick. If you've not already marked it on your calendar, this Thursday, the 21st, at 7.30 p.m., our two Steinway pianos are going to be used by some keyboardists, and so we invite you to all attend for one of the installments of our Sounds of the City at Plymouth. And later on, at Sunday, July 31st, at 2 p.m., we'll be having the jazz alumni from Valley High School who will also be performing. And this will also get announced later, but to celebrate the work of DMARC, 100% of the non-marked donations from today's and also yesterday's services will be going to support DMARC and their ministry. And a quick note that you are likely to see at the back, we hope that everyone can make it either to the Saturday service or the Sunday service next week, because we will be celebrating Reverend Lindsay's ministry. So we'll be, we'll be giving her farewell, but also appreciating all that she's done for us. So we invite you all to attend that so we can all say our goodbyes to Lindsay and appreciate what she's done for us. And now, let's turn our hearts and minds to the worship of God. Today is the...
now's my cue. <laughs> we invite everyone to rise, embody your spirit. Today is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O oh Lord, open our lips. Our mouths shall proclaim your praise. People of God, with one voice, let us pray. God of perfect love, to know you is to know love. You created us to live in community, one with another. Help us to see and know our neighbor, so that we might better love them, even as you love us. We confess that we have failed to be faithful to you. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. In your compassion, forgive us for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. As we gather to worship together, renew us and shape us into a people who know you and love you. In your name we pray. Amen. People of God, hear the good news. Our good and loving God loves you just the way you are and loves you too much to let you stay that way. Even now, God is working in you, with you, and through you for good. Yesterday is gone, and by the grace of Christ Jesus, all the ways we have missed the mark have been wiped clean. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we are empowered to start this day fresh. Thanks be to God, we are a forgiven people. Alleluia and amen. And now in thanksgiving to God and as a sign of love to our neighbors, let us share signs of God's reconciling love. The peace of Christ be with you.
right, for the story for all ages today, I invite everyone to come forward. And if you can tell, I have a bag of candy. So that may or may not influence your decision to come forward. If it does, uh, come on down. Uh, why is there such a good response, I wonder? All right, I have some more work here. Let's see, what do I have behind this? Oh no, I'm running into things, okay. I'm gonna need four volunteers today, okay? All right, how about uh, four people come on up here? Can you, can you self get into a group? One, two, three, four, oh, perfect, all right. Everybody's gonna get something fun before the end of the day, all right. Let's see, I should have had my helpers help me up here, okay. Now you all look pretty strong, let's see. How strong are you, those big muscles? Oh, those are big, yeah, all right. So here's the deal, all right? Who's, uh, who do you think is the strongest? Um, you think you're the strongest? All right, okay. Half, half a gator, all right. I'm gonna give you a box. You think you can hold a box? One sec, all right. You brought your crossword in case this was too boring, okay. <laughs> okay, all right. I'm gonna give you a box, all right? You think I can stack another box on top of that? How strong are you? Should I try here? All right, you might want to lower it so I can put one on top of it, okay? Okay, let's see, can you hold that? Maybe, maybe, maybe I'll just do one, okay? All right, let's see. Do you, want, do you have a couple more of you want to volunteer? You, you want to, okay. All right, here, I'm, here, you can come on up, come on up. Here, I'll give you a box too. All right, all right, okay. You got that? Okay, you said that's easy. Now, where did I put my candy? All right. Oh, here we go. Wow. Extra strong. All right. Here's the deal. All right. I want you to take as much candy as you can grab in one hand, okay? That's a lot. All right. Okay, go ahead. Take it on out. All right. As much as you can grab. Okay. As much as you can grab. All right. Uh, as much as you can grab, but you can't drop the box, okay? All right, now I think we need to even this out. Hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, I'm gonna, all right, hold on once, oh, okay. Here, let's, uh, let's do that, okay? All right, Let, why don't you scoot forward for legal purposes, okay? Okay, all right, now, uh, let's see. How about as much as you can grab, but you can't drop the box, okay? But I don't think you can use your head, you have to use your hands. Let's get that off your head there, okay? All right, perfect, all right, here we go. Now, as much as you can grab, okay? Huh? Oh, uh, you're ruining the object lesson. You're too clever. Okay. All right, as much as you can grab. All right. Okay, well, this worked out better in my head. So, all right, you can put the boxes down. You can put the boxes down. Let's go with this, all right? Was it easier to take stuff when your hands were full or empty? What do you think? Empty? Empty? Yeah, you were trying to, you were next leveling it. You were doing pretty good. All right. All right, let's come have a seat up here. All right, let's see. Do you all want some candy too? That was kind of meany. Yeah, as much as you can grab with your hand, all right? Two dots. Two dots. Go for it. Yeah, go for whatever you want. I'll just let you guys work that out, okay? Okay. All right. All right, you can stay here for just a second, all right? I have to say something about the lesson, otherwise I'll get in trouble, okay? All right, so here's the deal. In today's sermon, Pastor Sarah which is sitting back over there. She's visiting with us today. So you might not have seen her before, but Pastor Sarah is going to tell us about a story that Jesus tells. And Jesus sends out his disciples, his friends, out into the community, and he says, whenever you go out from place to place and city to city, don't take anything with you. Now, why wouldn't they take anything with them? What do you think? Any ideas? When they go visiting people and making new friends? Jesus wanted to make sure that when, when they go out into the community, that they think that... That what? Somebody could steal something. Okay, uh, you can be thinking about the things that are getting stolen. Jesus wanted to make sure when he sends his friends out into communities, that they're able to receive the kindness of other people. Are you filling your pockets? You're, that's extra good. Okay. <laughs> they're more creative than we give them credit for. Good. 
uh, wants to make sure that when they go out into the communities that they're able to take in the things that are good and the kindness of other people. And here's the thing, here's what I was trying to do. Sometimes we're so busy carrying our own stuff, carrying all the things that we're thinking about and all the things that we're worried about, all the things we're worried about other people maybe taking from us, maybe we're so busy with that that we don't have our hands free to take in the goodness of God. And so the, the reminder from this today is to think, as we listen to all of this that Pastor Sarah is going to bring us, is to say, think about what's going on in your life and make sure that you're always able to see and take in what is good. Does that make sense? The kindness of other people, the hospitality of others, that's a big word I know. All right, let's do a repeat after me prayer, and then uh, you're going to have to go back to your seats after that. This is all gluten-free and nut-free, but make sure you ask your grown-ups before you put anything in your mouth, okay? All right, that work? Okay, all right, here we do. Let's go repeat after me prayer, okay? Dear God, help me to see other people. And help me to see the gifts all around me. Help us to take in what is good. And not just keep what is good for ourselves. But to share what is good with others. Amen. All right, thank you. All right, can I get some volunteers to help me carry these boxes back over here? All right, come on, carry them all over here. The rest of you can go back to your seats. And remember, ask your grown-ups before you eat sugar.
first in silence, making room for God to pray in us, and listening for God's still speaking voice. Holy One, it is hard to imagine those first disciples all those years ago challenged to trust you and their community so deeply as they traveled empty-handed. We don't really know how to pack light, O oh God. We carry so much baggage including delusions of self-sufficiency and independence. We weigh down our lives with all the things we think we need in order to not depend on anyone else, including you, especially you. Forgive us, O oh God, and free us for lives that are more open, available, and radically dependent on you. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Implicit in that trust in our neighbors and in you, O oh God, is a recognition that there is enough. There is always enough if we but ask and share. Help us to shift from the small-mindedness of scarcity to the gratitude inspired by acknowledgement of and trust in the abundance that flows from you. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The fecundity of your good creation is on full display around us in these sticky summer days, O oh God. We praise you for fireflies in the gloaming, for the creativity and imagination of the artists and musicians who have flowed through our community in recent weeks for watermelon and popsicles and splash pads and all that helps us to taste and see that you, the animating force of all of our lives and of life itself, you are good. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us to keep your goodness in mind as we work for the good of our communities, O oh God. We pray a special prayer for women and girls and all people who carry the potential to bear life. What a sacred and complicated power. We pray for all who feel disempowered and endangered by the recent stripping of rights, that they may know courage and access to the care they need and the trust of their communities. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray a special prayer for the family and friends of Jayland Walker and all who are grieving loss due to racialized violence or violence of any kind. Pour out your peace that passes all understanding on them. Buoy up their souls. Grant them perseverance in the pursuit of justice and repair. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray a special prayer for all those serving the common good, O oh God. Teachers, legislators, health care workers, pastors, first responders, mental health workers, journalists, community leaders, artists, scientists, and all who are swimming against the current, working in public and private in ways that are big and small for the flourishing of life. Grant peace to the suffering, comfort to those who mourn, encouragement to all who strive for justice, protection to those in danger, shelter to the unhoused, food to the hungry, and renewed vision to all whose spirits grow faint, thirsting for you. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We pray all these things and the prayers of our hearts in the name of Jesus, who showed us the way and taught us how to shake off the dust. And we pray in his words, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. be seated. It is a privilege to introduce to you all the Reverend Sarah Trone Garriott as our guest preacher this morning. For many of you, Sarah needs no introduction. Not only has she been a guest preacher at Plymouth in the past, but she has also joined us recently for a special program on food insecurity in Iowa and Greater Des Moines. Many of you know Sarah from her work in state legislature, as a pastor, and for her public voice in our community. Sarah is specifically here with us this morning on behalf of the Des Moines Area Religious Council, or DMARC for short. Sarah joined DMARC in August of 2017 as the coordinator of interfaith engagement. 
and in this position, she works with diverse faith communities of the greater Des Moines area to create resources and opportunities. As we continue our Know Your Neighbor series, I'm grateful we're hearing directly from the organizations we're supporting and sustaining in our very own community. Please give a warm Plymouth welcome to the Reverend Sarah Trone Gary. This morning our gospel comes from Mark, the sixth chapter. Please set aside your bulletins and lift up your heads to see and hear the proclamation of the good news of the Word made flesh in Jesus Christ. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff. No bread, no bag, no money in their belts but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that place. If any place does not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out proclaiming that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick, and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. If any place will not welcome you, and they refuse to hear you as you leave, Shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. What a great scripture for a visiting preacher to choose. <laughs> In my work for the Des Moines Area Religious Council, I visit religious communities, preaching, teaching, building relationships, so that we can all work together on the big problems facing our communities. Problems like hunger. Every week is different, with different people in different places and different religious communities. I have the opportunity to preach where anyone will have a Lutheran in the pulpit. <laughs> Methodists, Presbyterians, Episcopalians, Disciples of Christ, Mennonite, and today, even the UCC. <laughs> Each time I visit a new community, there is the risk that my words will sound strange, that my behavior will seem strange, that the community's ways will feel strange to me. There is always the risk in going to new places and meeting new people that one will feel strange. So I'm glad to have this opportunity today for us to be a little strange together. I have had a lot of practice at being a stranger. I like to say that I am a professional stranger. I have lived in many different communities all across this country, nine different states, starting over to build a new life there each and every time. I was a pastor in a country church in rural Virginia. When I looked out the windows of that congregation, I saw sheep in the fields. And I was a minister at a big suburban church in Clive, Iowa. When I looked out the windows, I saw Whole Foods and Best Buy. <laughs> I was a hospital chaplain in Philadelphia and Chicago, each and every day walking into the worst moments of people's lives. And in 2020, I was elected to serve as the Iowa State Senator for Windsor Heights, Clive, Waukee, and parts of West Des Moines. Working in state government at the Iowa Capitol may be the strangest experience of them all. <laughs> and because of that, I have knocked on the doors of thousands of strangers just to say hello. And not all of them are happy to see me. Those who have been a stranger know what it is like to be welcomed. And strangers also know what it is like not to be welcomed. 
This is the most important lesson that Jesus teaches his disciples before they begin their ministry together. He wants them to experience being a stranger. So he sends them out with nothing. No bread, no bag, no money. Only one change of clothes so that they must rely on the hospitality of strangers. They have no choice but to look to others, to look to strangers for food, for shelter, for safety. And because of that, they learn about welcome because they receive it. They know what a stranger needs to feel welcome because they have experienced it. They will have to ask for help, and because of that, they will know how to help others. By being welcomed, they learn best how to welcome. And just after this lesson, as soon as they return, the people are coming. Hungry crowds of thousands, the sick, those in need of healing, the outcasts, they will all be coming. And Jesus needs his disciples to know how to receive them. When Jesus sends the disciples out with nothing to take care of themselves, they will also encounter people and places that do not welcome them. They will experience rejection, and they need to be ready for that too because they will be going out into a world where their message of the kingdom of God will sound very strange when compared to the kingdom of this world. They will be rejected. Their message and the healing they bring, the freedom they offer, will be refused. And they will need to learn how to move on, how to keep going. They need to practice letting go so that they do not become bitter or vengeful. Jesus is sending them to share the good news with the world, and he doesn't want anything to stand in their way or hold them back. As Christians, as disciples, the first and most important lesson that we can learn is how to be a stranger. So how strange is this community? How strange are you, people of Plymouth? What are your own experiences of being welcomed or not being welcomed that can empower this community to care for a world in need? Because people are hurting right now. During the pandemic, our food pantry network went from seeing 19,000 unique individuals every single month down to 10,000. Because during the pandemic, there was so much help available. And it was working. Cash for lower income families, enhanced unemployment benefits, a monthly child tax credit check, expanded SNAP food assistance benefits free school lunches and breakfast for everyone. Child poverty and child hunger was dramatically reduced. But now, most of those helps are gone. And the hurt is roaring right back. This month, our food pantry network has served 1,000 people each day we've been open. Every day we've been open, we're almost back to assisting 19,000 unique individuals this month. The people are coming. The hungry, the sick, the ones in need of healing, the outcasts. Jesus is sending them to us. He is sending us to them. And the ones who will be ready to go out and meet people where they are are the ones who are okay with things getting a little strange. The ones who will be up to the task to welcome in the ones who show up are those who have been strangers in some way at some point in their lives. So I thank you for welcoming me today and letting us be a little strange together. Because it is a strange thing to offer your entire offering to help those in need. 
as a Lutheran, I think it's a little strange that you were clapping in church, but we won't talk about that right now. Um, it's good for me, too, to be here. I give thanks for the ways that this community can invite others along in the work that Jesus calls us and sends us out to do. Amen. Good that we can be strange together. Uh, thank you. Well, the word liturgy literally means work of the people. Whenever we come together, we have good work to do. Perhaps the idea of coming to church to do work doesn't sound right, and yet the work we do in this place changes us, it shapes us, and it reaches out into our community. If we're doing our work or our liturgy faithfully, we'll be a people able to name what is both lamentable and joyful. We'll be a people that can care, share, and transform. We'll be a people layering on health in a world that isn't as whole as God longs for it to be. Every week as a part of our work together, this includes giving. In this, we are to be reminded that all we have, that we have received, it is always, always all a gift. Whether we've acted with gratitude or not, all of life, breath by breath, is always a gift. At our best, our common work ought to teach us to not only receive with gratitude, but also how to give with generosity. Now, today, 100% of the offering collected that's not otherwise designated will go directly to DMARC to make a tangible difference right here in our very own community. You should know that every time you give at Plymouth, you're already supporting organizations like DMARC, but today we wanted to go above and beyond. In your bulletin, there's a blurb about how DMARC is addressing food insecurity in Des Moines. The DMARC Food Pantry Network, established in 1976, consists of 14 pa partner pantry sites, 20-plus mobile food pantry sites, and a no-contact delivery service, and numerous community partners. It is the largest and oldest food pantry system in the state of Iowa. Plymouth, we have good work to do. May we all give with generosity when we can, as we seek to be a people who know, care, and walk with our neighbors. Thank you.
God, bless these gifts so that as we ask for our daily bread, we may also make sure that all your children are fed. And we remember that it was not just those who provide, but also those who come for offerings and bring the word and come to our doors that also come bearing your word, your presence, to move us to be a greater community, to be the church, and to be the neighbors we are called to be. Bless these gifts and the generosity of all here. In your name we pray. Amen. Friends at Plymouth, new and old, thank you for being here in this place today and doing our work together. Thank you, Sarah, for that lovely message, even despite the applause and the uncomfort we made you feel. Uh, thank you for being here today, and thank you for the good work you're advancing on behalf of DMARC. It was right before the service that Sarah came up to me and said, there is a need, not only is there is always a need that we are providing for, uh, there's a whole lot of food I'm, I've heard out by the collection bins. You all showed up today and you dropped off cans of peanut, well, not cans of peanut butter, I guess maybe they still make that, cans of food in jars of peanut, but, peanut butter and cereal, I can't talk. You were generous and thank you for that. But beyond that, Sarah shared even today, this very week, uh, there is a need for volunteers at the mobile pantry sites, is that right? So, the mobile pantry sites are one of the places that we're seeing more and more people coming all the time. And this week especially, we are in need of volunteers for two to three hour slots, one or two people. You help the folks shop the pantry while our staff person is checking in the next person. It's really helpful because if it's hot outside, we don't want people waiting, and you'll be working in the AC. Um, but it's a great way to help directly. And I will be presenting for the adult forum afterwards, but you can find the volunteer link to sign up on our website. This week especially, we're really asking if the community can step up and help with volunteers for our mobile sites. 
One of the things that you've probably heard me say already that everyone's advocacy will be different. Everyone's actions will be different. So whether you gave in cash or brought food or can volunteer or continue praying for these ministries, let's continue to be the church. Thank you again for being here. Sarah will be in fellowship forum immediately after this. So if you want to hear more or ask her questions, feel free to join us uh, in Waveland Hall where we'll keep talking together. But for now, people of God, may you hear these words of benediction before you go. People of God, may you know that you are welcomed and loved always by God. May you know that you have received the very hospitality of God and that this is not only for yourself. Having received the very hospitality of God, may you leave this place and extend that hospitality wherever it is that you go. And know this, that might make you strange. But if you are strange for the love and peace and hospitality of God, then so be it, even now as you go in peace. Amen.